Elon Musk has stated that this year it will become obvious that Tesla's solar roof solution is a killer product. At the same time, Tesla is ramping up solar roofs and solar panel deployments to the highest level in two and a half years. Tesla has also begun making strategic moves to help this vision come to life. So what does Tesla's product roadmap and strategy look like today, and where could they bring new initiatives and new products to help power the world with renewable energy? We've recently heard reports that Tesla had increased the price of its solar solution significantly for some customers. This was a question that was asked to Elon Musk on the Q1 conference call. Here's how he replied. Yeah, first of all, I should say that the, the demand for the solar roof remains strong. So despite uh, raising the price, the demand is still um, significantly in excess of our ability to, uh, to meet the demand to, to install the solar roofs. So production is going fine, but, but we are choked at the installation point. We did find that we basically made some significant mistakes in, uh, in assessing the difficulty of certain roofs, but the complexity of roofs varies dramatically. Some roofs are to be literally two or three times easier than other roofs. Um, so you just can't have a one-size-fits-all situation. Uh, if a roof has a lot of protuberances um, or if the roof, or, or if the roof uh, sort of uh, the core structure of the roof uh, is uh, is rotted out or is not not strong enough to hold the solar roof, uh, then the the costs can be you know, two or can be double, sometimes three times uh, what we what our initial quotes were. Elon Musk is saying that Tesla has made some mistakes, and due to varying roof complexity, it could cost almost triple or more than Tesla initially expected. In those cases, Tesla needed to raise prices or offer deposit refunds. But it may be important to learn more about how solar is installed to understand why this is the case. The electricity generated by solar panels comes in the form of DC or direct current electricity. However, the appliances in your home use alternating current, or AC. In order to convert from DC to AC, a device called an inverter is used. Actually, Tesla's solar panels can be connected to third-party inverters, although Tesla makes its own inverters as well, which we'll talk about more soon. The configuration for Tesla's solar, however, is to hook up the solar panels using what's called string inverters. The solar panels are grouped together with strings, which are wires, but they all feed into a single central inverter. This is a very reliable and robust way of hooking up solar panels. One major advantage is that the bulk of the electronics, such as the inverter, is in a central location, meaning you only need one of them, and it can be found near the electrical box for easy access and isn't placed on the roof. However, the string inverter configuration has a major drawback, which is that the panels can only be monitored in groups at the string level. This means that if one of the solar panels has an issue, it's difficult to tell which one it is, since there are multiple panels hooked up to the same string. It may also take more time to diagnose the issue to narrow down the panel causing the problems. The reason is that if one of the panels is only operating at a fraction of its capacity, it affects all of the connected panels in the same way. If one of the panels is being obstructed by leaves, or if it's in the shade, it will bring down the output of all of the other panels as well, which isn't ideal. Now there are some other alternatives such as micro-inverters or power optimizers, but Tesla doesn't use these at this time. In the case of power optimizers, there's a device on each solar panel that conditions the DC electricity before sending it to a central inverter. This option is more expensive than string inverters, but can add higher efficiency by being able to manage each panel individually. Micro-inverters are similar, yet would come at an even higher cost where each panel gets its own micro-inverter and converts the electricity from DC to AC right off the bat. This again allows for higher optimization and individual panel management and monitoring. The cost of micro-inverters has come down over the years, making this option more popular. However, in the case of micro-inverters and power optimizers, there's more electronics which means more potential points of failure, and these electronics sits on the roof versus with strings, there's only one inverter that sits inside the house. So it tends to vary case by case or roof by roof which option to choose. Tesla, of course, is trying to simplify their process as much as possible, so they're sticking with one solution, the string inverter method, but now we're starting to see why some of the roof types may not be ideal for their strategy. That said, it's unlikely that Tesla will switch to a micro-inverter setup. Ideally, they would need to manufacture their own solar panels, which currently are outsourced from Q-cells. 
If they could manufacture it themselves, they could integrate microinverters at the factory instead of during installation time. For solar roof, this doesn't seem to make much sense since there are many small tiles which are linked together during installation, so microinverters wouldn't make sense to connect at the factory. And finally, if every panel had its own inverter on the roof, then Tesla's easy to access central inverter wouldn't be needed. Tesla is looking to keep every installation the same and consistent for now and not have wasted expenses with redundant parts. Now Tesla does have some more options with their current setup. Still using the string inverter method, solar panels can be grouped together and fed into a device called an MPPT, which Tesla uses, and this basically separates different sets of solar panel strings such that they don't affect each other, and they can be monitored separately at the string level. Because the amount of sunlight varies throughout the day, especially if the solar panels are placed in two different sides of a roof, it would likely be beneficial to separate these panels into two different strings using MPPTs. The MPPTs will sweep over the panels varying currents and voltage and find the optimal combination to produce the maximum amount of power. It continuously tracks and adjusts the voltage, so even if one of the panels is partially shaded, it can still boost efficiency. And this can help make the string inverter method a little more similar to microinverters where partial shading can be mitigated. Now consider that for Tesla's solar panel deployments, the smallest option uses 12 panels. With larger roofs, this could be 48 different panels. Ideally, Tesla wants simple roofs with no shading where they can string all of the panels together. This would be amazing for installers and it would be fast and easy to set up with minimal electronics or MPPTs required and a single inverter. This would be great. However, with more complex roofs that have various pitches, different sides, perhaps surrounding trees that provide partial shading, now it requires a more custom design to figure out which panels will need to be grouped together with an MPPT to provide the high efficiency that the customer expects. This will take more time to design and installers not only need to navigate a more difficult roof, but more electronics needs to be installed and the increased materials also adds to the cost of the installation. Tesla states that they use satellite imagery to remotely design the solar system if that imagery is available or they will do a site visit. It appears that given the larger number of panels that Tesla installs and the complexity of certain roofs, Tesla underestimated the difficulty and the cost, which is why they made a U-turn for some customers and made the decision to increase the price. I think that over time and after Tesla does many more installs, they will get much better at estimating the roof difficulty. One idea is that Tesla's machine learning team can help out, if they don't already, to make more accurate estimations and better designs given the satellite imagery and other information that they've collected before giving the customer a quote. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and subscribe. We would very much appreciate you supporting our channel. Also, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and check out our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Now, Tesla has made two major changes that hint at where Elon Musk is trying to take the energy division of the company. The first is what Electric calls a secret product that Tesla quietly introduced called the Powerwall 2 Plus, which is their home battery storage system. And the second change that Elon Musk announced is that Tesla Solar will be exclusive to Tesla Powerwall and vice versa, meaning you can only buy both together and they will no longer be sold individually for the time being. This way, all of the solar configurations that Tesla installs will feed right into Tesla's Powerwall setup. Elon says that the Powerwall will effectively sit between the utility meter and the main breaker, which enables super simple install and of course seamless whole house backup. On the Q1 conference call, Elon Musk also added that this will make every house look the same from an electrical standpoint and the installers don't need to rewire the breaker box and this way every house doesn't require a custom work of art. Keep in mind that Tesla's goal is to scale this initiative to the masses in order to speed up transitioning the world to sustainable energy. It's highly important that every house is similar, making installation, which is the slowest part, much faster. And also, if they can remove components, this will save installation time and decrease the costs. Tesla's new Powerwall 2 Plus will have increased specs and will replace many of the different parts that were previously required. On the left, a third-party solar inverter was previously being used and a Tesla gateway was needed to disconnect in case of an outage. Actually, regular solar stops working when there's an outage because it needs to disconnect from the grid to not push power to the grid and avoid harming any workers. With Powerwall, solar still works even during an outage. 
Now Tesla's Powerwall Plus integrates these devices into a single box that sits on top of the Powerwall, taking up less space and doing more functionality. Of course, the main panel is still there, just not shown in the diagram on the right. Since solar always goes with Powerwall, it's possible that Tesla works to have a single inverter. Currently, it appears as though there are two inverters, one for solar and one for converting DC to AC from the battery pack. If Tesla can merge these into a single, smaller device, it could cut costs down the road. At least at this time, it now means that all solar installations going forward will simply connect to Tesla's own inverter as opposed to third parties. This simplifies the design and installation. As no third-party inverters are needed, Tesla now has control over the cost and functionality of their own device. While they may have reduced their market size by excluding homes that just need either solar or batteries but not both, they're leaning towards becoming more vertically integrated to control the end-to-end -end experience. Similar to what they do with the vehicle, being vertically integrated allows them to move faster and it removes roadblocks such as dealing with third-party devices. Also in the future, if Tesla wants to add a new feature into their product, they don't need to ask or coordinate with anyone but themselves since they control the solar generation and the battery storage experience. Tesla already has an app that's used to manage all your energy needs, solar, battery, and vehicle, and their hardware integration allows them to better combine data together, diagnose issues, and optimize efficiencies for customers and costs to themselves. Tesla states that the Powerwall Plus has an integrated design and streamlined installation that will allow for a simple connection to any home, improved power capability, about double the previous version, and brings whole home backup into a smaller package. It comes with a battery inverter and system controller, and you can run your appliances with it. Of course, it connects to the internet for software updates, and it comes with a suite of application modes such as self-powered, time-based control, and backup modes. Self-powered mode will store any solar energy not used during the day to power your home at night. And if the power wall is fully charged, excess energy can be sent back into the grid. And if your home uses more energy than the power wall can provide, the grid energy will be added in. Backup power mode will reserve all of the power wall's energy in case there's an outage. And time-based control allows for maximizing savings based on charging during low cost times and discharging during peak utility rates. Tesla's current Powerwall versions have these features as well, but going forward, Powerwall will always be exclusively installed with solar. Tesla's website says that when Powerwall is installed with solar, it will not be able to charge from the grid. Tesla's Powerwall Plus spec still shows that these modes are available, and they are available with current Powerwall and solar installations. So you can still use the backup only and time-based modes, but the Powerwall will be charged using solar for these modes. Tesla's time-based control will learn Tesla's time-based control mode will learn your energy usage pattern over time and is capable of optimizing energy usage. Just because Powerwall doesn't charge from the grid doesn't mean the grid isn't being used. In the balanced version of the time-based control, Powerwall charges with excess solar during off-peak times. This means that the grid can still be used to provide for the house while Powerwall is being charged with solar. In this mode, it will discharge at any time, but minimize during off-peak times. In cost savings mode, Powerwall will also charge with excess solar during off-peak times, but will discharge during peak times or make room for solar in the battery based on upcoming energy forecasts. Now there are situations where the Powerwall might be low on power and it's dark outside, meaning no solar energy is being generated. If a power outage occurs, it may have been useful to be able to charge off the grid. It's unlikely that the Powerwall Plus supports this feature, since previous versions of the Powerwall didn't either. It's not totally necessary, however, if Powerwall can forecast using weather information when power outages are more likely, and make sure that the battery is fully charged beforehand to never get into this type of situation. But for prolonged times when there's no solar, it might be a good feature to have to be able to charge off the grid during off-peak hours. An interesting thing to point out is that according to Energy Sage, an AC coupled system such as a Tesla Powerwall is in fact capable of charging from both solar panels and the grid. However, it appears that the Powerwall doesn't offer these capabilities simultaneously. Now last year, Electric reported that Tesla hit a run rate of 1,000 solar roofs per week, which seems to still be a point of confusion for investors since Tesla hasn't disclosed how many roofs it's producing currently. However, looking at Tesla's Q1 results, they just reached their highest point in two and a half years, deploying 92 megawatts of solar in the first quarter, which is nine times more than what they sold in the previous year. 
Using the smallest 4 kilowatt roof size as the base, which Tessa considers as one roof, if we divide that into 92 megawatts, Tessa deployed 23,000 roofs in the quarter. Of course, if a single roof was 8 kilowatts, it would count as two roofs. Now, if we divide 23,000 by about 12.8 weeks in the quarter, we see Tesla is deploying almost 1,800 roofs per week. However, this number includes both solar roof and retrofit, whereas Tesla only produces their own solar roof tiles. That said, these are actually deployments. Tesla's production may be even higher, and they could have ramped up during the quarter. So for the first time, we are seeing early positive signs that Tesla is ramping up solar rather quickly. Now overall, I think that the Powerwall Plus and the exclusivity with solar is an excellent step in the right direction. It's important that Tesla solves the basic scaling issues first, even if they're slightly limiting their addressable market by only offering a single type of solution that may not be for everyone since it's not too flexible. Once they've reached higher scale, they can look at adding more customization, but it's important that Tesla ramps up deployments quickly. It looks like their Buffalo Gigafactory is producing solar tiles at a rapid pace, but Tesla Energy, just in the last few quarters, has had negative margins. I think that's due at least in major part to the solar ramp up. Tesla even states in their quarterly report that they are focusing on ramping production of energy storage products, improving their solar roof installation capability and efficiency, and increasing market share of retrofit solar energy systems. I think that with all of Tesla's ramp ups, there's always large losses at first. In this case, I think they're being partially masked by the energy storage division. But eventually, as Tesla hits certain levels of scale, this will flip back to being in the green. Looking ahead, I think Tesla is better positioned now with more vertical integration to continue finding more ways of optimizing and simplifying their solar installations. They've basically taken away most of the third-party items, removed roadblocks, and simplified their hardware installation. I think in combination with their state-of-the-art machine learning AI team, they have great forecasting capabilities and excellent integration between all of their products that can be managed on the Tesla app. They currently have an extremely compelling offering and it appears that all of the pieces have come together to allow Tesla to scale to the masses. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on Tesla's Solar and Powerwall Plus strategy. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.